Hi everyone, my name is Phil. My partners are George, Andy and Andrew. And I'd like to start today by asking you all a question. Let's say we took a photo of a car taken 50 years ago. Now, a photo of a car taken today. Let's take a photo of a phone taken 50 years ago. And a photo of a phone taken today. Now, technology has come a long way over the course of the past 50 years. But I ask you, has it though? Because I want to show you two more photos. One is of a classroom taken 50 years ago. The other of a classroom of today. Now, besides the advent of color photography, why is it that technology hasn't kept pace with the classroom? Thanks, Phil. I'd like to introduce you to Loop. Loop is a real-time communication tool that uses technology to give teachers immediate feedback about their students' understanding and mood levels. Thanks, George. Now let's take a look at how we built it. We used a React Redux framework to navigate the world of state flowing through our app in the form of questions from students to teachers to students and data from students to teachers. We used Sockets.io for real-time communication, Postgres to persist our data, Mocha and Chai to test it, and D3 to visually beautifully represent it. Now, let's take a quick look at the flow of Loop to better understand its infrastructure. As you can see, independent components manage their own state while Socket synchronizes data across it. Um, this allows for a scalable and dynamic foundation on which we could easily add future functionality. Thanks, Andy. Now, user experience and design was a crucial part of our, our flow in designing the site, which is why we wanted to design it for how our users might use it. For example, a teacher in front of a classroom, they'd have particularly optimized desktop views, whereas students would have iPads and iPhone responsive views themselves. But what better way to show you this than with a live demonstration from teacher Andrew and student George? Thanks, Phil. So as Phil said, I am a teacher, so I'm gonna hit the four teachers button to log in. I'm brought to my login page. I'm gonna log in my credentials, Andrew at loop.edu. And once I'm logged in, I'm brought to my profile page. I can see all my previous loops. I can start them, delete them, see stats. But we're interested in creating a new loop, so we're gonna jump in and start to do that. Once we log in, we're prompted to name our loop and describe our loop. This is important because students are gonna be able to identify our loop based upon this description. We're gonna do a loop based upon The Great Gatsby, one of my favorite books. So, The Great Gatsby, our description, a loop about The Great Gatsby. Once we have that, we click Continue, and we are prompted to choose our first question type. We can do fill in the blank, multiple choice, open-ended. We're gonna do a multiple choice question to start. Once here, we write our question and our answer types. So, we're gonna ask the question, who's the narrator of The Great Gatsby? And our choices will be Nick, Daisy, Gatsby, and Jordan. If you've read the book, of course you know the correct answer is A, Nick. We save this question for later, and we can either save our presentation or we can start it. Let's go ahead and start it and jump right in. Once we start our presentation, we see that this screen is completely responsive. And we have the ability to share our loop with our students, either via Bitly link or social media such as Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. But George is going to join us right now to show us that he can join straight from the app itself. So as a student, I'm using an iPhone, showing that Loop is truly responsive. I'm going to click that For Students button, and I'm presented with a page that shows any loops currently in progress. There's one about the Great Gatsby, a loop about the Great Gatsby. Let's join the loop. Any questions a teacher sends will appear in the heading. However, I'd like to send a question to my teacher using the form below. Who was the author of the Great Gatsby? Let's submit that. So down the bottom of my view, I see questions come in. Who's the author of The Great Gatsby? I must not address that in class. Of course, it's F. Scott Fitzgerald, so I'm gonna tick it off. And let's go ahead and start our loop by hitting Start Presentation to send our first question. Some questions have come in. Who was the narrator of The Great Gatsby? This teacher's been doing a great job, so I know the answer. It's gonna be Nick. Let's submit that. Down the bottom of my view, I see the answers coming via chart. This is the real power of loop. This chart will update real time as students respond to questions. So let's go ahead and reveal the answer so our students know if they got it correct. It was Nick, I got it right. I'm feeling great about myself, but I'd like to let the teacher know that. I'm gonna click the mood tab and hit the thumbs up button. Now on my screen, I see the mood is going up. Class morale is up. I'm feeling really good at how this class is going. Let's go ahead, hit next card. And we see that we're out of questions, so let's go ahead and end the lecture. Once here, we see some post-loop stats. We can uh, reflect on our teaching practice, see how we did, and hope to do better later. 
Thank you very much for uh, your time. Uh, we can find us at loop-teach.com.